Hey, what's going on, Team AUAB? It's your man, Chief Bruce, coming at you with another quick short talk. But it's going to be a little different today. I have a special guest coming in all the way from the 1st Expeditionary Silver Engineering Squadron. See, Airman Kaylee Johnson will be joining me today. She's going to get to ask a few questions and see what type of answers I'm going to give. This should be good. All right, so let's get ready. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's do this. Hi, my name is Erin Johnson from Emergency Management, and today I'm interviewing Chief Master Sergeant Bruce. You've been in for 23 years. Do you have any advice for airmen that's struggling? So I would say for, for the airmen that's struggling to figure out where they want to be, you know, if they want to re-enlist, if they want to get out, they need to figure out their purpose and figure out, hey, why am I here? And if I'm in the Air Force to get a certain set of skills that I can carry to the outside and my purpose is to help others, hey, so be it. Thank you for your service to your nation. Do your four years, do your six years, press on. For those that say, hey, I really love what I'm doing in the Air Force and I found my purpose in that, that aspect, then hey man, stay for the 20, 25, 30, 40 years. What do you say to people who find it hard to find their purpose in the Air Force or just in their career field? One, you need to find your purpose as a person, like as a human being, why do you exist, right? Case in point for me, I joined at the age of 17. Although I knew I wanted to stay in the Air Force for 20 plus years when I joined, I still didn't realize what my purpose was. My, I want to help as many people as possible become the best, whatever they are, whatever it is that they're going after, I want to make them the best at that, right? Uh, so I'm like this, a life coach, right? Like I, I enjoy doing that. And so then your career field, that aspect of it, how do I become the best at this particular job, whatever it is that I'm doing, and focus on that, becoming the best at that. Now, if you get in that career field and you realize, oh man, might not be a fit, you know, it might be something that's completely off from what I, what I do, then that's where the Air Force offers you the opportunity to cross train, right, or to, uh, to commission, whatever. There's a lot of off ramps for you to get to where you wanna, so you can get after your purpose, right? So that's, what I would, that's the advice I would give. Now, a lot of time people are coming in with degrees that are very similar to those of officers. They have like bachelor's or even master's for some airmen. Um, do you feel like that's closing the gap between officers and enlisted? It's two different oaths, right? So an officer takes the oath of office, right? We take the oath of enlistment. Two separate responsibilities that we have from a commissioned officer corps to what we do as the enlisted force. Mm -hmm. so, now, as far as the airman joining, yes, much smarter than I was as a young airman. Man, whoo, 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 whoo. But we need an educated enlisted force just like we need an educated officer corps, so. Do you feel that getting your CTAF later in your career or early in your career, does it affect like your progression? Uh, if you notice now, we've changed it to where you can have an associate's degree from any accredited institution. Because really, Community College of the Air Force is an accredited institution. So no one would say, man, I got my Florida State. I got my University of Florida. I would recommend you get it as early in your career as possible, right? So then in that way, it helps enhance, you, help enhance your job performance. But it's something that you can get out the way uh, prior to moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. So some of us, older heads, we waited a little longer, right? <laughs> uh, because we were very focused on the mission. You throw, I'm throwing my age out there, throwing how long I've been, just throwing me out there. In today's fight, it's a tad bit different. The world is connected, you know, even out here, you can go to school, got an education office, you know, so there's really no excuse as to why you wouldn't pursue education to make yourself better. It's not just about the Air Force and being a critical thinker. That's what education is about, making you think outside the box. What would you say is your next level of progression now that you've reached the highest level of enlisted force? <laughs> uh, no, that's it. Like, that's, gee, there's, there's no, there's, there's no, there's no we 10. So, <laughs> like, I, this, this is it, ma'am. So, yeah, once you get there. Yeah. <laughs> now my role in life is to make sure that I'm serving others. Once you become a sergeant, so when you look at the term sergeant, it comes from the Latin servient, right, or, or one who's a servant. Uh, now all that means is that I'm the chief of servants, right? So I, I've, you've mastered servitude and you've mastered how to serve others. And that's really, that's, that's your role now. Is there anything that you would tell your past self knowing what you know today? <laughs> <laughs> Woo. 
Uh, I say the first thing I would tell myself is keep your mouth shut sometimes, right? You don't know everything. So I would tell myself, one, keep your mouth shut. Two, you don't come in as a chief. You don't come in as an NCO. You come in as an airman. So uh, master doing that before you try to do everybody else's job. It's, it takes time. It takes progression. It, it takes seasoning. It takes experience. Like th Those things are important to your development as a, as a human being and your development as an airman, as a, as a leader in the Air Force. So I would tell myself those two things. Keep your mouth shut and grow where you plant it. You know, instead of trying to do everybody else's job. And speaking of doing your job, sir, mm -hmm. well, what is it that you do here at IUD? <laughs> what does it, what do you do? That's what, that's what you're asking. Because we see your crazy videos, we see you running around the base, you're riding on buses, you're doing all kind of crazy stuff, right? Uh, so my job is to ensure, my number one job is to ensure that you are ready. Well, have we given you the tools? Have we given you the training to be successful at your job? That's number one. Number two, my job is to also be the ears, right? The eyes and ears of the enlisted force for my boss, right? I'm your voice to the boss. So whether it's our Wi-Fi or the food, right? Like those are the things that I, I take to him and I say, hey, sir, here's, here's, what, here's what's going down here in the streets. This is what's really happening. To see how we can make things better for you and for your families, uh, even back home, so. Those are probably like my main jobs. I hear a lot of stuff. That's my job. And I catch it from all different directions. And that's the fun part about the position. That's the fun part about leadership is being able to take all of that data. I like to call it data. Some people might call it concerns. Some people might call them complaints. I call it data because it's all good data. It's good data points to be able to parse through it and then give the boss the, the unfiltered, un unemotional, hey, here are, here are the facts, sir. And here, here's how the enlisted corps is doing. Here's how our officer corps is doing uh, across the base. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what I do. Doesn't doesn't sound hard, does it? Oh, it sounds really difficult. No. <laughs>